Hallelujah. How's everybody doing today? I said, how's everybody doing today? They found a few folks around here that sound like they're doing something, but how's everybody really doing today? We got any blessed folk in the house? Huh? We got anyone that really can say I'm blessed? Oh, hallelujah. Father, this morning, oh God, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. I give you the praise, oh God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for, Lord God, for watching over our senior pastor and the first lady, Lord God, as they get together, just, Lord God, to have some family time, oh God. I speak the blessing and the empowerment to succeed over their lives this morning. I pray that, Lord God, you would meet them, that you would touch them, that you would bless them, that you would use them. You would allow them this morning, Lord God, to see, Lord God, your hand moving in this house, oh God. I just thank you, Lord, for all that you say and all that you do. I thank you for everyone that you brought here today. That's, Lord God, give them an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying today, oh God. I ask you, Lord God, to sweep through this house, Lord God. I pray utterances, Lord God. I pray that the blessing of the Lord would make people rich in this house, oh God. And I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you're about to say and do. Allow me, Lord God, just to be a sounding symbol, oh God. Remove me out of the equation, oh God, that you may be glorified. I hide myself behind the cross that you may be lifted up, oh God, that you may be lifted on high this morning. And I thank you, Lord, for this privilege and this honor. I don't take it lightly. Everyone be patient with me. It's my first Sunday ever. I thank God for allowing me this, this opportunity. Amen. 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 I thank God for it. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> what a mighty God we serve. I just want to start out with a road check. Has anybody ever heard of a road check? A road check is when you can look down the aisle that you're in, look to the left, look to the right, and see somebody with those gleaming eyes. Somebody that says, you know what, I'm like-minded with you today. Hallelujah. I believe that today somebody might run, somebody might jump, somebody might shout, somebody might pray in that row. And I just want to be connected, hallelujah, to the anointing when it falls and when it hits in the house. Does anybody say amen to that? Yeah. So when I say road check, I like to hear a couple of rowdy people just say, you know what? Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yes! Woo. Woo. Hallelujah. Without no further ado, I want to say that today I believe that whatever your assignment over your life is, is all going to be determined by the alignment that you have with God. I believe that God wants to align you with the greatest blessing of all. God wants to do something that's far above and beyond everything we can ask for or anything that we could ever think of. The most important part of it is being aligned with him. Because I believe that the closer you get to God, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I believe the closer you get to God, hallelujah, the greater your alignment is going to be with him. Hallelujah. You're going to start to see things differently. You're going to start to speak things differently. You're going to start to act out differently. Your assignment has a lot to do with your alignment. How you align yourself with God. You know, I, I found myself telling a man of God recently, I said, you know what? The deeper you drive, I mean, excuse me, the deeper you dive is the further you drive. And you know why I said that? Because you know what? I believe that we're in the greatest hour of the church right now. I believe right now that people 
are really starting to get in with God and understand what God is really all about, what God really wants to do in the house, not only in this house, but in your house. Because it starts in your house. It starts in your house when you're able to be in Walmart and proclaim the word of God over somebody. It starts in the job when you're out there in your job and somebody rubs you wrong and says, well, in the name of Jesus, I just place you at, your feet, at his feet right now. There's times I had to swallow my pride just so that I could be able to understand that I'm not going to allow anything in my life to ever deter the assignment that's over my life. Can anybody say amen to that? See, I believe you've cried enough, you've struggled enough, and you want and you wandered enough. But now I want you to say something like you mean it to somebody next to you. Look at somebody next to you and tell them it's over. It's over. It's over. We're getting ready to cross over. We're getting ready to cross over. We're getting ready to cross over. We're crossing over. We're letting it all go. We're leaving it all behind. Time to say it's over. I come to declare a new season over the lighthouse right now. I believe there's a new horizon that's getting ready to come in and flood your life. I believe that God is going to get ready to come into your life in a greater measure. There's been so many folks that have been pressing in and pressing and pressing and praying and praying. I come to tell you, it's over. It's over, that thing, hallelujah. You're going to have to put it under the blood today. Hallelujah. You want to conquer it? Then you know what? Walk over it today. That sickness, that disease, that person that rubs you the wrong way, that neighbor, that, that car that's being stubborn, start to speak those things that be not over, over it right now, just as it is right now in the name of Jesus. Come in alignment with what's in my heart. We keep on praying the same old prayer and keep thinking the same old thoughts, but it's time to say enough is enough. Is there anybody here that can say enough is enough today? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why? I come to declare you have the victory. You have the victory. You have the victory this morning. You have the victory in Jesus. You have the victory in Jesus. Let's open up the word to 1 Corinthians. In fact, you don't even have to if you don't want to. But 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Remind me that I wrote a couple things. Just makes it easier for me to be able to get to. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, what? Victory through our Lord who? Jesus Christ. He gives you the what? He gives you what? Yes, you need to understand. You have the victory in Jesus Christ. You know what that means? That means that you have to walk like you're victorious. You have to talk like you're victorious. You need to understand that God paid a price so that today you can be set free. See, the problem today is that we struggle with too much stuff. And you know, the struggles in our lives sometimes try to dictate to us who we are and where we are in Christ Jesus. But you know what? Ain't no thing in my life ever going to take authority over what God has given me in my life. You know why? Because like I said earlier, I've determined that my alignment is going to determine my assignment. I've decided that, folks. I also want to go to Ephesians 6. You don't have to go there. I'll, I'll read it out to you. Finally, brethren, 
Be strong in what? In the Lord and in the power of his might. He wants you to be strong. Those days that the enemy comes in like a flood, those days when the enemy tries to come against you, you need to understand you got the victory, which is number one, and he wants you to be strong, which is number two. But he also says over in Philippians 4.13 that I can do what? Why can you do all things? Woo! Hallelujah. I think my case is closed. Do I got to say any more? Honestly, you need to understand that I can do all things. I can do all. Tell your neighbor, I can do all things. You know, I don't know how you've seen some folks sometimes. You know, sometimes you see them down and out. But today, everyone's going to have the victory. So that down and out is going to go right now in the name of Jesus. I declare freedom over this house this morning. I come to declare freedom. There's people that pray day and night and night and day for a breakthrough. How many have been praying so much for a breakthrough? How many here really, truly, look at this. Oh, my God. I come to tell you the wait is over. The wait is over. Listen, the Lord told me to tell you that the wait is over. What you're believing for, you got to speak those things that be not as though they are. I'm believing for a car. Look, see the car in the spirit. Call it in, in the name of Jesus. Does he not own all the title deeds of everything in this world? Does everything belong to him? Oh, my God. The word of God says you have the victory. We got to stop acting like we're victims. We're no, no, there's no victims in the house anymore. We are victorious in Christ Jesus. I come to proclaim the victory over all these victorious folks that are here in this house this morning. But there's something I need you to do. And what I need you to do is stop taking it back. I need you to stop taking it back. All those things that you put down and you laid it down before the Lord and you put it in front of the altar and you sat here and you rang the bell and you sang the song and you ran around the sanctuary, stop taking it back. Because you know what? I noticed something. When I pray for somebody, sometimes they'll walk away with the symptoms of whatever it was I prayed for for them. Not understanding that their disbelief just stopped the blessing from coming into their lives. Because you don't see it that moment doesn't mean you haven't received it. The package was given unto you. It has your name on it. Just allow the package to manifest itself. It's time to access your promises. Tell somebody next to you. It's time to access your promises. You know why? Your promises were never for you. Your promises were never for you. There are people in this, in this world right now that are waiting for your manifestation to come alive so that they can get going to where God has them to be. Listen to me. That promise that was given in your life, sometimes, you know what? How many times have you heard being a Christian? You know what? I have a relative that's sick, and they're de dealing with whatever it is that they had in their body. And you know what we start to do? We pray for our relative, but we don't pray for another person that has that same sickness. And he says, whatever you pray, okay, and you truly believe it's going to happen, I want you to understand that, you know what? I pray this morning that anyone that's dealing with any sickness and disease in their body right now, that it would go right now in the name of Jesus. You know why? Because I may have some afflictions in my life, and for them to be able to manifest in my life, I need to pray that it manifest in your life. I truly believe the manifestation of God is going to happen when you take it and you speak it into existence. That's why it sounds so easy when you hear, speak those things that be not as though they are. And it just seems so simple when you hear that. 
But I want you to know how deep and how profound it is when you speak those things that be not as, they, as though they are. Because you know what's going to happen? You're going to step into what God created you to be. You're going to step into your season, guys. When you start calling on those things the way you should, when you start saying, you know what, enough is enough, I'm not going to allow this anymore in my life. It's imp the most important thing I found in my life is having the right posture and having the right perspective. The problem today is that a lot of people have forgotten that posture is so important. And how you perceive things are even more important. Be careful. Guard your perspective. Guard your posture. It's time that you kneel and bow before the Lord sometimes and say, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that I made it through this day, oh God. I know that so many things could have shipwrecked me today, but Lord, you made a way for me to make it through. I'm whole, I'm healed, I'm well. I can, I can choose and I can pick a blue shirt, a green shirt. I can pick, I'm, I'm going to eat chicken. I'm gonna, I, can, I, I can thank God for the cereal, like my brother says, that he got sugar in it today. When was the last time we did that? You know, we find it funny, but it's real. There's a lot of people that are tackling situations in their lives right now where they're in total lack. They have nothing but God. Nothing but God. Listen, it's time for you to occupy your promises. I come to tell you, whatever your promises are with God, learn them. Walk them out. Understand them. It's so important. Look at somebody and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Listen, get ready, get ready, get ready. You know why I say get ready, get ready, get ready? I'm going to tell you why. You want to hear why? Maybe I shouldn't say it to you guys. You want to hear it? I believe with all my heart that there's a sound coming into this house. There's a sound, hallelujah, there's a sound, hallelujah, that's getting ready to hit in this house, hallelujah, that's going to cause a shift in your life. There's a sound of God reverberating right now in this sanctuary, hallelujah. And there's some prayer warriors that are coming together, hallelujah, believing, hallelujah, that they're going to get together, Lord God, and allow the Spirit of God to flow in this house. Someone told me recently, prayer is the key, the key ring to the keys that unlocks the door to your blessing. Prayer is the key ring that holds the keys to your blessing. Are you accessing your key ring? Are you accessing your key ring is the question this morning. Hmm. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God. See, I want you to know, storms are going to come. I ain't come here to sit here and tell you things that ain't true. I come to tell you just like it is. I have to put it raw out there. Storms are going to come. Because you're, you're serving God and you're doing the right things doesn't mean that you're not going to be tested, that you're not going to be proven, that you're not going to go through some stuff. Storms are going to come. My question to you this morning is, are you ready? Are you ready? You see, when they tell you a hurricane's coming, what do they do? The news gets together and they start on every channel telling you, you need to get a generator. Why? Because you need power. Why? Because darkness is getting ready to come. Darkness is getting ready to come. If you don't turn on a generator, you ain't going to have light. And when you don't have light and you're in the middle of darkness, everything tries to come against you. 
It's so important to have light in your life because the light smothers out the darkness. It opens up doors so that you can see. So my question to you today again is, are you ready? You see, you know what? Weakness is a sign of one thing and one thing only. And, and, and I just come to proclaim, there's no weak folk in the lighthouse. Before I say this, because it's him that's speaking, not me, I just want you to know there's no weak folk in the, in the lighthouse. We come here with situations. We come here with storms in our lives. We come here with, with hell and high water came against us. But you know what weakness is a sign of? You know what weakness is a sign of? You know what weakness is a sign of? You're walking backwards. You're not walking in the right direction. You're not trusting in the God that you serve. I declare and decree this morning, full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Don't allow nothing to derail you. Don't allow nothing to deter you. Don't allow nothing to come against you and take you out of what God has planned for your life. His promises are yea and amen. His promises are yea and amen. There's people that testified on Friday over being able to overcome addictions to what? To things that the enemy throws out there at you. The enemy is real. His attacks are real. All point bulletin, I come to tell you, it's real. And it's coming to a place near you. <laughs> this is a real good one, and it, and it really hit me hard. Who you are or why you are, where you are, because you missed your moment. I'm sorry, guys, that wasn't me. Who you are, why you are, where you are, is because you missed your moment. When you had the time to sit there and prostrate yourself before God, television was more important. When you had the time to sit there in prayer and everybody keeps telling you, you know why? Let's come out, let's make a difference in the church, let's get together, let's form a circle, let's start knocking the devil down, let's start letting him know where he belongs. Instead, you allow the busyness of life to get in the way of the calling that's over your life. And I'm sorry that I bring this up on Sunday. I really didn't want to go there. But this is what the Lord told me to tell you folks. And I have to be obedient to what he told me to tell you. Who you are and why you are where you are, because you miss, maybe missed a moment. I hate to say it, guys. But you know what? I come to shake you up and to wake you up this morning. I come to shake you up and wake you up this morning. Because sometimes we sleep and we slumber in times that we shouldn't be, when it's time to be alert and to be ready to do battle against the enemy, somebody has to come sometimes and shake, shake, shake. You ever heard that? Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. I have to sift you. I have to sift you, says the Lord. I have to sift you so that I can remove the impurities and take the broken pieces and mend them back together. To take those pieces that you look at in a way that you shouldn't and understand that, you know what, out of my brokenness, out of my worst times in my life, God did the most amazing things for me. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. Oh, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God. Oh.
Can anyone stop what God has for us? I believe that. But I have to come against that for a moment. Let me plead my case. Can anyone stop what God has for you? Yes, you can. What you just say? You can. You are the one that receives the package or says, that's not my name and I don't want it. Again, it's not me telling you, it's him telling you. You can take that package and say, that's not mine. Mm -mm. It's not mine. So can anybody deter what God is doing? Yes. You can. But I want you to know something else. When God sends a package to you and he labels it with your name on it, when he puts your address on the package, there ain't no devil in hell that can stop it. There's no devil in hell that can stop your package from coming to you. And I need you to understand this morning, hallelujah, that God's given angels charge over you. God's given charge, angels charge over you. He wants you to receive a breakthrough. How many believe that God wants you to receive a breakthrough this morning? He wants you to receive a breakthrough. You ready to hear this one? For you to, re for you to receive that breakthrough that you're talking about, it's something you got to do. It doesn't just come because you're pretty. It doesn't come because you're all dressed up. It doesn't come because you have money in your pocket. It doesn't come because you have that beautiful house and the moray shoes and the, and, the, and the shark skin suit and all that other good stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't come because of that. It's time for you to break out, says the Lord. It's time for you to break out and launch out and go get yours. See, a fisherman doesn't go out to the sea without bringing some hooks and worms and ready to launch out so that he knows he can bring something back in. And it's the same in the kingdom of God. Don't get yourself caught up in anything that you're not going to be able to know there's a reward coming back for whatever it is you're going in for. There has to be a reward for anything that you're doing. If, it doesn't have, if it's not tied to a reward, don't get involved in it. I don't care how good it looks, how good it seems. I tell you, don't get involved. Some things, the box is just too pretty. It's too pretty. It's just wrapped too perfect. Sometimes some boxes don't belong to you. And you got to have discernment to know when. When is the right time? When is the right season? Is this for me? Is this truly for me? Or is this going to knock me off of the calling I have in my life? See, if I was Warren Buffett and I had all the money in the world, I wouldn't write you a check for $10 million each. Because for some people here, $10 million, you may be able to work with it and do the right thing with it. But for a lot of other people, $10 million will see you under a bridge somewhere. It'll see you under a bridge somewhere, stuck in a hole. And you know when you're stuck in a hole, you, mean, you know you're dying whenever you fall in a foxhole. Foxholes are made to take you out. Take inventory this morning, guys. Take inventory. Some of us have to let go of some relationships in our lives. Some of the things that we've gotten that we think that are good to us, that are really detrimental to us. And the reason why I say some of us need to get rid of some of those things in our lives was because of one thing and one thing only. 
It was never authorized for you. It was never authorized for you by him. Be careful who's the sender of the package that you receive. Because if it's not him that has his name and his signature on it, and by the way, he usually signs with his blood to remind you huh, of what he did for you, how you're free today, how now you have the freedom choice to be able to say yes or to say no. Don't take any unauthorized packages because I guarantee you that they're going to take you out. They're going to remove what God had planned in your life. Let's go to Deuteronomy 11, 22 through 25. When everybody has it, throw your Bible at me. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I bruise real easily, by the way, guys. Deuteronomy 22 through 25. Everybody say amen. amen. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commands, which I've commanded you to do, to do them, to love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations, and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon your sole of your feet thread shall be yours. Everywhere the sole of your feet thread shall be mine. Shall it not be? Okay. From the wilderness in Lebanon... And from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea, shall your coast be. Did you hear that? Let me, no, no, I think that went over somebody. Let me, let, me, let me say it again. All right? From the wilderness, from being out there, and from Lebanon, and from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea, shall your coast be. So what does that mean to somebody here? If you could just understand that everything was always yours. If you, do you understand that God had it all planned to be yours from the beginning? And you know what? No matter what may have happened back then, I want you to know it never stopped being yours. It never stopped being yours. It was never taken away from you. The only one that takes it away are those that we spoke about. Your alignment determines your authority. Your alignment determines your assignment. Remember what I said about that? The closer you get to God the more you get to realize that it was all yours all the time. And some of us don't walk around understanding how blessed we really are because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the cattle. Do you understand that? Let me go to this side. Hey, guys, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Did you understand that? Everything is his and it's all been designed for you to access, for you to have in your life. And the only thing that stops it is who? Going on, 25. There shall be no man be able to stand before you. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of of you upon all the land that ye shall thread upon, as he hath said unto you. It's all yours. 
We walk around thinking like, oh, my God, why, why, is it, uh, why do I always go through this same thing? Why do these things always happen to me and not to everybody else? I kind of tell you that until you start speaking those things that be not as though they are, you're going to keep going through that same mentality. You're going to start keep seeing things that same way. I call in my blessing every day. I call my blessing in every day. Anybody that knows about me knows that I'm living in the, in the limelight of God right now. You know why? Because I trust him for everything. Honey, what do I always say? There's a, there's, am I, they're flooding my store with so many salespeople that is amazing. How could you make money anymore in, my, in the business that I'm in? I work, by the way, I work for Rooms to Go Furniture. And when I started there, we were only working with eight guys, and we were making money that was unbelievable. But now, the floor is up to 20 guys. So now the challenge is that's before everybody is so much greater. But I come to proclaim to you that I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed. You know why? Yeah. It's never been me. I've never been the source. I've never been the source of what God is doing in my life. It's always been him and him only. I've never tried to take the pilot seat away from my God. I've never, never tried to take the pilot seat away. This morning, I come to declare and to decree this morning that depression has got to go. There's too many depressed people in the kingdom of God. There's too many suicidal thoughts in the kingdom of God. I come to bind you up by the power of God this morning. I tell you, I come to give you walking papers. I come to tell you that you must go right now. In the name of Jesus. And you know why I say that? This has been, this has fallen on too many family lineages for too long. This has been a lineage long. This isn't just a you thing. It's not a thing that you just took on. I want you to understand that. Don't think that this just happened to you. This is a lineage thing. This is a thing that's been going on for far too long. And the reason why I put myself out there this morning to rebuke it in the name of Jesus because for far too long you've been trying to drink it away, you've been trying to smoke it away, and you've been trying to sleep it away. You've been trying, again, to drink it away, smoke it away, sleep it away. Talk it away. But until you don't take authority over those things and start speaking to those things and letting those things know that they have no authority in your life anymore, hallelujah, that you've been made whole, that you're healed in the name of Jesus. I'm not the man that I was last week. I'm not the man that I was yesterday. I'm a man that's been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus made a way for me. The blood. It was the blood and nothing but the blood of Jesus. That gave us this authority that I'm talking about. It's time for you to exercise your right, brothers and sisters. It's time, it's time, it's time. I come to shake you up and to wake you up this morning and to proclaim that you have the victory this morning. The Lord has given angels charge over your life. And I believe that there's angels that are sitting just like this 
over your home sitting on your rooftop. And sitting right on your rooftop, just like this. And I want you to, I, I, I come to proclaim that the enemy could come and he could walk down your street and he could walk this way and he could walk that way and he could try to contemplate anything that he wants to bring against you to launch an attack and he'll walk this way and he'll walk that way. But you know what? He won't dare come in your house. He won't dare come in your house. He won't dare. I could just see the enemy right now. Running and fleeing. Because I see angels right now looking down from your rooftop saying, you better go right now. You better go right now. If you know what's good for you, you better go right now. You better go right now. I'm giving you a warning right now. You better get out of here. You better get out of here. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Can we give him a 10-second praise? Everybody stand up for a minute. Give him a 10-second praise. Come on, see? Come on, say it like a minute. Those road check people, come on. Those road check people right now. Come on, a little bit louder now. Come on, we can do it. Come on, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Hallelujah! 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 Before you sit down, I want you to hear something. Everything is yours. And all you need to do is possess it. Can anybody say amen? Amen. 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 Then my case is closed. Amen.